Yeah. Um, it, it, the story gets better, though, I promise. Oh, I mean, and- that's great. But take it slow because you might overwhelm me with how awesome it is so far. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, your buddy Basil here, and you are listening to the Joy Spiracy Theory. And uh, we've got a great show this week. But first, hey, if you're a new listener, what's up? Hey, thanks for stopping by. This is a wonderful place to spend your time. We hope you enjoy it here. And for all you returning listeners and friends, uh, welcome. And I think everybody, uh, new and old friends, are going to enjoy this interview I had with Renee. Uh, She's a wonderful lady from Maryland, and uh, which is not New England. Uh, so there's, if, if you're confused about what New England is, uh, we've cleared that up here. Um, but it was actually uh, a really powerful interview. We talked about being an only child and everything that comes along with that. So if you, if you have brothers and sisters, here you get a deep, dark look into the life of an only child. And if you're an only child out there, you're not alone. Somebody else understands you. It's wonderful. Um, so that that was certainly fantastic, um, but there's along with that as well as uh, you know the the issues of early life and broken families um, that you know there's a lot to talk about there. So don't worry though, it gets good. Uh, we talk about uh, Ouija board, a lot of Ouija board stuff here. That's gonna be crazy. Uh, get get ready for that. Um, also a grandma who likes to, uh, to to booze up her grandchildren. So that's also fun. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm going to get myself in trouble one of these days. And also we talk about uh, just the the motivation that it takes to be happy. I mean, just that's step one, y'all. But first, I want to thank everybody who supports the Patreon page. Thank you so much. You are the only reason that this is able to continue. Is the This podcast is completely listener-supported as of now. We don't have any merchandise or sponsors, but I mean, if you guys... Uh, know anybody over at Swiffer Wet Jet? Just let them know I'm here. I I can sell wet jets all day long. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, so there you go. I think that's about it. Um, remember, you can join the uh, the prayer, the TJT prayer team. You can email tjtprayer at gmail.com or find the Facebook group. Shouldn't be too hard. Kelsey's doing a great job over there. And what's up to all the TJT prayer people? Um, you guys are doing good work, doing the Lord's work over there. Um, I think that's about it. I don't know if there's much more I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about here. So that's yes, that's it. I'm leaving it short, short, nice, quick, and short. <laughs> okay, here we go. Enjoy this interview with Renee, or as I uh, so lovingly call her, Rini. You. Hello. Hello. Renee, how you doing? Oh my gosh. Hey, what's up, Basil? Oh, it's just doing just great. I uh I I got attacked by a cat. Now there's a cat sitting on me and my keyboard is sitting on top of the cat. <laughs> yeah. So I I have I have animal furniture now. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. I, th- I woke up in the middle. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I'm your story is way better. Uh, well, I woke up in the middle of the night and like my daughter, I guess had crawled into bed with me at some point and she like takes up the whole thing and the dog is like laying on top of me. Cuddle puddle? Which, yeah. Yeah. And um, so I'm like curled up in this like fetal position that's, you know, I'm taking up maybe like the space of like a foot and a half like square, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you start to share your life with other uh, living beings. You have to make space, literally and figuratively. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> well, before we get too deep here, uh, talking about cats and, and little babies, um, what are you grateful for today? Oh, my gosh. there's uh, You know, I've been thinking about this all day, and there's so much to choose from. But – um. I guess what really like sticks out in my mind the most is like the truth Mm. and my appreciation of the truth, like the love, I guess, that God has put in my heart 
for the truth. And, you know, the truth is within myself, you know, because when you start asking God, show me the truth, you know, that you want me to see. And, and he just, you know, starts uncovering like kind of all this stuff and, and in the world around us and, and just everything. Um, because I tell you, when you start to kind of, um, see different things that are going on and you kind of, you know, your eyes start to get opened or whatever. And the first thing you want to do is just tell the people that, um, that, you know, right. And it turns out that they don't care. Like for <laughs> no, the most, they do not. And it's like, that's like the biggest bummer. It's, it's, <laughs> it's almost worse than what you find out, you know, cause you start finding out all this stuff and, like the roof is just blown off of your life and you're like, what? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And, but like, what's more of a bummer than that is when you start finding out exactly who doesn't care. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's a bummer. Well, that's good. So, we we got to be grateful for our, our own inner drive for the truth. That's right. I yeah. like that. And I think God has a lot to do with that. So thank you very much, God. Oh yes, oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Yeah. That's that's that might be one of the most existentially questioned, <laughs> uh, grateful things that I've ever started the the show with. So, very good job. Thank you. I mean, cats would also be a great answer, or like yeah, smoothies. Yeah, cats are great. Yeah, um, <laughs> but <laughs> but, the, but yours is good too. Um, so, Renee, is that how you say this name of yours? Yes. Okay. I did. I. 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 You know, it's one of those. It's one of those names that kind of has a funny spelling to it. Just it, you know, in in the fashion that English words have sometimes. Yeah, it does. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't calling you Renee and be <laughs> some plebeian when your real name is Reni. <laughs> Reni. <laughs> yeah, there's this one person I used to know like a long, long time ago, and. He, uh, he used to either call me like Rene, like you just said, or like Irene. He would always call me Irene. That's weird. Yeah. I'm wondering <laughs> if he just never actually learned your name. I'm just I don't think he cared trying to, trying to fake it. Rene's kind of a fun name, though. Um, yeah. Okay, so where are you in the world? Um, I am in Tennessee. Ah, Tennessee, very nice. I've been to Tennessee. Where in Tennessee? Or, um, just outside of Knoxville in a town called. Let's see, I can never pronounce it correctly. I say Kerryville. Your own town? It's not. Well, I just live here. I'm not really from here. <laughs> you just live so, here. You don't know the name of it. <laughs> I can't pronounce it. I try to rhyme it with Merle Haggard. Because my dad's from here, and he says you have to kind of rhyme it with Merle Haggard. Okay. So I try to say Kerrville, but it just doesn't come out right. So it's like Kerryville. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I, I get it. When you start getting into uh, colloquialisms and accents and things, it's uh, it can be hard to pronounce. But exactly. Kerrville. <laughs> I think when that's I pretty good. Moved- when I first moved here, people would say, where do you live? And I got to a point where I would just like give up and I would just have to say two towns south of La Follette. And like they would get that. And I wow. wasn't ever sure if they were just um, giving me sort of a, a little bit of a hard time because <laughs> I'm a quote unquote Yankee, oh. even though Maryland is south of the Mason Dixon line, I think. Um, or, you know, if they really just couldn't understand me. So, like, <laughs> like, well, okay. So you're from Maryland. I am. Originally. Okay. I, I detect some sort of accent, but I'm a California boy, so that doesn't mean anything to me. I mean, there <laughs> is anything sounds weird to me. Um, but so, so, so very interesting. Maryland, that's a place I haven't been. I think you win that contest. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Actually, just um, just inside Maryland, um, over the D.C. line, yeah. is is where I grew up. We had the like the neighborhood I lived in. It was, uh, gosh, like the term "broad daylight." That was like the time of day where the most heinous crimes occurred. What? Can you believe they did that in broad daylight? You know that kind of thing. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a pretty crazy neighborhood. Whoa, that's that's kind of spooky. I didn't. I, is that 
New England? Is that part of New England? <laughs> no. Maryland? Yeah. No. <laughs> what is New England? Dang it. So now just. Know, like maybe 10 hours north or something. I'm not sure. I think New England is above New York. Where the it's... heck is Maryland? Maryland's I can't just like this. right beside Virginia. <laughs> Hold on. I got to look this up. I cannot yeah. believe that I just have no geographical reference to where Maryland is. You could possibly be the first person that's worse at geography than I am. Congratulations. I'm not that bad at geography. <laughs> I think oh, you are. You know what I'm thinking? I'm <laughs> thinking of Maine. I apologize. That was unfair of me. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking at it now. Is yeah. that where they pop the car? Oh my gosh! Uh, I what did you say? I'm sorry, I can't understand. <laughs> I just the, tried to do a that terrible foreign that language. Was just you were just terrible speaking. accent. <laughs> we could just do a whole show where we have a competition who has the worst uh, accents, or or do the worst impressions of celebrities. But I don't want to embarrass you because I'm definitely would win that contest. I don't know. <sighs> okay. All right. Well, we'll save that for the end. We'll have that competition later. All right. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, you, you you started you started in Maryland, which is not yes. New England, and somehow you made it to Tennessee. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your childhood, where you grew up, how that went. Well, you know, it turns out, okay, you know that movie, The Exorcist? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> How's that for an opening line? Yeah, for the, yeah that's a great one. <laughs> like, I always heard that, you know, where I lived, oh, you know, right around the corners where the Exodus boy, or Exodus, Exorcist, Exodus boy was, the real life Evan story. Is real. Um, but yeah, come to find out, I'm fairly certain, um, I don't know if that's this the actual situation mm -hmm. that the movie was based off of but apparently um yeah it was right around the corner from me in, in mount rainier because that's where i lived for the most part um was where a pretty like significant case that gained um apparently some notoriety or whatever really um, a, a demonic possession case yeah, and let me tell you, that set the tone for, like, the whole neighborhood. Um, no. It was crazy. Like, I, from a from a really early age, I learned, because I lived in an apartment complex, and so I learned how to open the apartment building door, because you would open the door to go into the building. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to no open way. the door. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a fancy building. <laughs> What is this technology you speak of? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So you sorry. you lived in this crazy universe where you had to open a door to go through it. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, but I learned how to walk in, and you know, if somebody was there, like hiding in the shadows, inside. Oh, ready for an ambush. The, yeah, I learned how to walk oh in, like um, what do you call it, um. Like a just like a stick, uh, an arm or like some sort of appendage I could lose if need be. What? To away. You know, oh, yeah. you, do you that know, like I, I, I do that same move, too, once in a while when I'm like in the ocean with sharks or like <laughs> climbing into a scary cave, not when I'm just going home. That's crazy. <laughs> That's how I grew up. I had no idea that Maryland was so gangster it's like it's, that it's got its parts wow. it has its parts i thought they Man, just had, had crabs there <laughs> they do they there's, have a lot of crabs there's crabs i grew up eating they're some blue crabs, crabs. Mm. yeah and i tell you man if you ever see like oh, oh it's just sad yeah uh, how, i just i can't even go there no. <laughs> crabs the yeah it's we're sad talking about the ambushes made. but the crab part is sad to you yeah. Yeah, the crab part is the ambushes are fine, but the, um, the crabs are sad. Are there any crab yeah. ambushes? <laughs> they have bushels. Just gangs of crabs roaming the streets <laughs> of Maryland. Have you ever been? Cra You've never been crabbing. I have I'm you caught some crustaceans in my time. Have you? Yeah, but not bushels. I want to hear your story. This is not a podcast about me talking about how oh. I catch crabs. Sorry about that. That's okay. I, I gotta. 
<laughs> you need like an air horn to like sound when I start going off on like some tangent. No, you're good. Anyway. That's what we're all about here. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I learned how to only lose like one appendage while walking in the, you know, wow. the apartment door, mm -hmm. uh, building. And then, um, let's see. Oh yeah. And so growing up, um, you know, it's I talk about generational, like, I don't know, curses or I don't know what you call it, but like everybody on my mom's side of the family was like lunatics, um, just really just a, like a whole path of destruction along really? my mom's side. Mm. Yeah. My dad's side too, but like in a different way, cause my mom's side, um, is all from Maryland and my dad's side is all from uh, Tennessee. And so, um, yeah, so I grew up in, uh, mostly in Mount Rainier and, uh, gosh, I was just like this awkward, if you can imagine that awkward, shy, you know, kid. And, uh, I don't know. Went to Catholic school. No, oh, that's fun. I've learned. Yeah. I've learned more and more. I think about Catholicism in the past, maybe few episodes than I that I may have for a while. Uh, that being said, the really the only thing I knew about Catholicism before that is how you know the Pope is the Antichrist and uh, <laughs> aliens are running the Vatican from a mile below the surface of the earth. <laughs> So I've been getting a lot of firsthand accounts of uh, Catholicism <laughs> recently. So I'm excited to hear about that. Um, wait, real quick. How old were you when you were like trying to uh, trying to go through a door into your house but hope that there weren't criminals there? Um, probably about, I would say like seven oh, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so they started you young. I bet oh, nothing yeah. can surprise you nowadays, though. You're just ready for danger at all points. Yeah. You know, you would think, but I tell you what, there's always, like, some new thing that you don't think of. Mm, you're losing your edge, Renee. You're losing your edge. I know. I actually, like, uh, now that I live in Tennessee, I don't always lock the car door. <laughs> Is that a thing? Is Tennessee a safe place? Um, I mean, not that I no. think it's a dangerous <laughs> environment, but <laughs> some places are very safe and some places are just like everywhere else, you know? Oh, so you're just getting forgetful. Well, yeah, I'm just, I'm getting lax, you know, because mm. there's not a bunch of like, you know, I don't hear gunshots. So I automatically equate that that to be like a safe place. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is a good signifier of a safe place is when there's not gunshots all the time. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's nice. Um, Okay, I got to ask. You 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 made such a big deal about the crab situation and how it breaks your heart. What's the what was the sad crab thing? I you know, I grew up catching crabs and eating crabs and one day I saw how they were made, like how they were cooked. Oh. And do you know about that? I'm assuming with fire of some kind. There's I well, most, um, live. do you want to know? Alive. Yeah. Alive yeah. in boiling water. Yeah, that's not... Yes. Do they, do they yell? Do they scream? I've heard lobsters can, like, scream. Oh, I've never heard a crab scream, but they really try hard to get away. Okay. Well, this is really getting me down now, so thanks a lot, Renee. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rene, why? <laughs> No, okay. Okay. So you grew up in kind of dangerous environment. Interesting. Uh, what about your family life? Um, my mom was going through a lot at the time. So she, uh, I was like, well, <laughs> this was in the eighties. So I was a latchkey kid. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know, that's just how it was back then. Sure. So it I was, was the eighties. <laughs> things were a lot different back then. <laughs> So I think in such um, a neighborhood, like it's such an environment, you know, with mm -hmm. uh, there was a, a lot of, um, I guess, demonic maybe activity, but I didn't know what it was at the time. Mm. I just knew that, you know, things were kind of there. And so, and I could s sort of pick up on them, but nobody else seemed to be able to. So... <laughs> I know this is going to sound crazy, but that's sort of where I started to find myself worth in the fact that, hey, you know, these I can see these things, you know, they're haunting me, that that kind of thing. Whoa, wait. <clears throat> Whoa. OK, you really eased into that one <laughs> really gently. So you are you are actually seeing entities. 
Well, no, not, well, I did, but not, not at this point. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know if you've ever said like just shadows, but that yeah. look like distorted. Yeah, as, sure. So that's kind of my take on, you, you know, like what is wrong with that shadow? Why does it look that way? I, I don't know if that makes any sense. No, but. sure. So as a kid, you kind of had this sense that there is something going on, some fishies going on. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Mm. And, um, you know, it's funny because for some reason, I just, I grew, you know, I just remember like all this emotional pain, like from when I was little. And I tell you what, though, if it wasn't for Catholic school drilling into my head not to kill yourself because you'll go straight to hell, you know, because I, I grew up just, you know, wanting, I was miserable. I just wanted to die. Really? And, oh, yeah, yeah, it was horrible. Um, now, was so, this just because of, I mean, what was that? There's got to be a lot of factors for that, right? Yeah, yeah I I don't know. Mm. Um, the, our, my family wasn't, you know, the healthiest um, emotionally and mentally, obviously. But, um, I mean, I wasn't, like, physically abused or, you know, I didn't have anything, like, horrible happen to me. You know, there wasn't anything like that. So I'm just... I'm still not exactly sure. All I can kind of chalk it up to now, <clears throat> looking back, is just I don't know, man. Sometimes the the the, the awful things on the spirit, you know, side yeah, of things, just yeah. like to torment us. There's some oppression some going on there, huh? Yes, good word for it. Thank yeah. you. <clears throat> so, what about brothers and sisters? None, just me. Only child, yeah. Yeah, you're one of those. You're you're one of those weird kids. I get it now. Yes, it's all thank you. making sense. It's all that's making right. sense. That's right. That's very cool. <coughs> so, it, you know, that's a that's a unique experience. Uh, you know, obviously there are other only children in the world, but it's uh, unique in the way that, you know, you really do kind of have a little bit more of an inner life when you're an only child, and especially, you know. It, it, you find ways to cope, especially if your family is sort of, um, you know, maybe not the the happiest family that you see on TV. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, you really do develop an inner life. You're absolutely right. Yeah, talk a little bit. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. That I mean, how what was that like? I'm sure there's a couple only children out there listening, but um, you know, those brothers and sisters people, they don't get it. They do not get it. Yeah, you know, for the longest time, I just wanted a brother or sister, just someone who, uh, because in in my in my estimation, a brother or sister would be somebody who would be like on my side, mm -hmm. you know, right? <laughs> um, somebody who would just always be there. Somebody who, you know, when people picked on me or whatever, somebody that would have my back. Or yeah, um. But from what I've seen growing up, it doesn't always work out that way with brothers and sisters. <clears throat> yeah, but it yeah, can. Things are complicated, apparently. <laughs> apparently, life does that once in a while. Yeah. So you know, I just, um, gosh, I was so lonely as a as a kid, you know, and actually, um, that carried into my adulthood too. I was just so desperately lonely and desperately like seeking, you know, happiness and desperately seeking love and desperately seeking some kind of connection to the world that I lived in. Um, and I just always thought that something was missing and, and that, that it was a brother or a sister or, you know, some sort of like companion. That. Yes. Yes. Very yeah. good word. Exactly. Thank you. I've got a lot of good words. I'll, I'm going to keep trying to impress you. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, that's, um, you know, the, the only children, it's an interesting situation. You kind of got to learn, learn how things work a little bit differently. Uh, how about friends? Do you have any great, good friends or brotherly or sisterly friends or did it not take that route very much? I did, um, but it was probably when I got to um, eighth grade that I really, um, like, there's this one uh, person, Karen, and she was my friend since probably, like, kindergarten, mm -hmm. um, but I was just such a mess. I mean, I, I didn't know how to be a good friend. I didn't know how to cherish 
uh, friendships. I didn't know how to, you know, respect them. Mm, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was just a crazy mess. Yeah. Um, Did, when you look back, do you kind of see the, the classic only child, uh, you know, stigmas and, you know, b- playing out in your life or absolutely. Uh, what, what are some of that? Let's go through this. We, I don't know if I've had a detailed conversation about only children on this podcast. And, you know, I think the world needs to know, Rini. I think they need to know. Um, right. So, so uh, tell, just, just keep going. Let's give the world a little bit of a, a window into only childdom. Well, um, I didn't have anyone to play with because there was no kids in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so when I would go to school... Um, I would hear about brothers and sisters, you know, hanging out together and kids walking around the neighborhood playing with other kids. And I, I didn't have any of that. Um, and, and so my world literally revolved around me. Um, Mm. I would just, you know, just find ways to entertain myself. Um, I would line up, I would do the classic like girl thing, like line up my stuffed animals and like sing to them, you know, I think I... (laughs) Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Only children performing for no one. <laughs> uh, so true. No, but I, I, hey, I get it. I get it. You, somebody's got to watch you perform when you're an only child. Um, and you, that's right. So, did you ever like find that you already mentioned kind of with your friends? You just didn't really have a maybe a baseline for. For friendship or empathy, I guess, which is already a difficult thing for children in general. But when you don't have that constant reminder that other people have feelings, <laughs> you kind of have to learn that the hard way once in a while, huh? You know, you're absolutely right. And <clears throat> that actually brings up a good um, a good point. It brings to mind uh, a, a life lesson that it took me a really long time to learn. Um, don't be flaky. When you tell somebody that you're going to do something, they're relying on you to do it. Mm. <clears throat> I'm sorry. It's allergy season here. That's no, okay. Um, so when you break your word, um, other, you know, when, when you say that you're going to do something and you give somebody your word, um, people are relying a lot of times on what you say. When, when there's no one around, being an only child with basically no one around me, um, I I never learned the value of that until I was older and mm. just my word, you know, I I didn't grasp that um that reality that yeah, when I tell somebody something follow through once in a while cuz there's yeah. ex- expectations. Yeah, so I was completely flaky and self-absorbed mm. and my whole mission in life was to not be miserable <clears throat> like every day I would wake up and I'd be like what can I do to not want to die today wow and uh, yeah it was crazy um so so what I would <laughs> what I would do to like entertain myself is I would write songs um I would just come up with these like different projects to do Um, when I would get around the adults, like I would charge them like admission, like I would charge them, (laughs) oh, it's a, I charge them a toll. I was like a toll booth. I would charge them a toll to walk through the hallway. (laughs) I mean, I would just stand there and block it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And and they would pay me. They would just pay me. Oh, there's a little entrepreneur there. I, yes. That's so so funny. That's So that's what I, and then I. And then, oh, yeah, and then I would make um, these, like, concoctions, like, you know, Tang, because that's back when they had Tang, like, Tang and Kool-Aid, and I would, <laughs> I would like, sell it to my family, you know, and, and I'm the <laughs> only one, so they already felt sorry for me. Oh, poor Renee, she has nobody to play with. She really needs a brother or sister. Then, Here, just just give her the money and, and drink the awful concoction that she's made. <laughs> that is so funny. I can totally <laughs> relate to that, actually. Um, I used to make orange juice that I would steal from the freezer. That's like the frozen <laughs> orange juice concentrate. I would just make it in a, a pot, like a, just a cooking pot and then carry the pot to the park and try to sell it to people and people would buy it. It was a different time. It was so strange. Yeah. Good luck getting away with that. now. <laughs> yeah. No, they, 
be like, why is this kid trying to give me LSD orange juice? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 25 cents is a pretty good deal for LSD, I think. Yeah, it's a bargain. Yeah. So, you know, I, that's very fascinating. I got to say, as a West Coaster, we already pretty much consider the entire East Coast haunted. Um, <gasps> and being an only child in Maryland, like, obviously, you know, that family troubles work into it. I, I feel like I'm watching the, the first act of a horror movie. Oh, you have no idea. You oh. have no idea. I mean, the craziest stuff happens, you know, that you're like, oh, there's no way this is really happening. <laughs> and it, it is. It happens. Well, tell me about it. <clears throat> well, I discovered, okay, this is, and this is kind of, I don't want to get off on like a faith-based tangent here, but when they, you know, when people um, <laughs> no start talking about No faith on this podcast. <laughs> <I> no. <know. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Okay, lay it on me. When um when people start talking about, you know, inviting things in, you really do, but it's like a little at a time. Mm. Um the misery, the torment, the you know, the praying to die, um things like that. That all invites that stuff in. And then one day, um a well-meaning um relative, God rest her soul, um she saw like how much pain I was in. And I think I, I was in eighth grade. Cause no, no, I'm sorry. I was in third grade. Cause I was eight years old and she gave me my first homemade, uh, they didn't have wine coolers back then, but she was like, here, try this. It'll make you feel better. And it was <laughs> Manischewitz mixed with Sprite. Oh. So, so <laughs> I thought, I th <laughs> for a second, it sounded like she made some hooch and she was just giving it to a child. So you were eight years old. Wait, who was this woman who gave you? Well, it was my haunt, grandmother. Haunted hooch. Oh, of course it's grandmother. Yeah. This yeah. whole thing is just making so much sense now. <laughs> and, you know, she, she, she actually cared enough to, to try to alleviate my torment in the best way she knew how. Yeah. I'm not advocating giving kids alcohol. No, you should never not. ever do that. But, you know. My whole family on that side was just Looney Tunes. Yeah, so she cared enough to help. Yeah. So your your misery and your depression as a child was so blatant that your grandmother boozed you up. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um. It, it, the story gets better though. I promise. Oh, I mean, and that's great. But take it slow because you might overwhelm me with how awesome it is so far. <laughs> so, um, so, so that's, you know, and then, then I was like, oh, you know, and it, it made me feel better. <clears throat> and I thought, oh, this is like much better than the way I normally feel. So, you know, again, inviting stuff in. Mm -hmm. And um, one day, how in the world did I come upon this? I really don't. Oh, I know. Um. So in the meantime, my mom would um, find different churches, you know, to to say, hey, let's try this church. And hey, because she was doing her best to instill some, you know, some value in, in her and I. And so we started going to this one church and I learned that I was supposed to read my Bible. And so I started doing that. And I'm not and this is going to sound completely Looney Tunes, but I was by myself reading my Bible one day and the dog that we had this one dog was um, kind of laying, like I was laying down on the bed, reading my Bible, propped up a little bit against the, the wall. The be My back was to the wall. And the dog was sort of laying like almost um, sort of up to my shoulder maybe. And uh, he, he was laying like a lo long ways by my side. Mm -hmm. And I heard this voice say, put that Bible down or that dog is going to bite you in the nose. And what? I think, <laughs> yeah, I know. I just sound like a complete lunatic, but, um, and I was like, no, you know, but this all happened like in my head and I, I'm not kidding you. The dog reached up and like, I looked at the dog and that dog, it, the aim couldn't have been better if it was in a movie. The dog bit my nose. I still remember because his bottom teeth like hooked into like the top part of like oh my, my nostril. Gosh. Like when, and I was like, no way. It scared me so bad. I got up and I like ran out of the house, you know, yeah. and, uh, or the apartment. 
And uh, yeah, so that was that. So, you know, stuff like weird stuff like that would happen. And then so interesting. Well, it, you know, and it led to because this is before Internet. This is before cable TV. I remember we had like super TV, the box with the one button on it, Whoa. you know, so um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I have no idea how I learned about what, you know, paranormal parapsychologists were. But that's what I wanted to be. And at that time, I think there was only like one um, college that offered any kind of education on paranormal psychology. And I think it was in like it was like Oxford or something. So I really got into the paranormal and I got fascinated by it, obviously. Yeah. Um, So fast forward, you know, a couple of years later and uh, I moved to a different part of Maryland. And now I'm in a neighborhood with. Uh, peers with children and um, you know I'm 13 and I'm like oh man I'm around kids my age you know I can go walk around the neighborhood and and you know it's just uh, nothing good comes from that when because I never had any rules or boundaries before that because I didn't have to you know it was never don't do this with your friends you know because I didn't have anyone um, well, anyway, uh, somehow I had learned about something called a Ouija board. Oh, it, boy. Yeah, we all know about the Ouija board. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, well, you know, what they don't tell you is that thing is kind of addicting. And, um, Interesting. Or it, can, it can be. And at the time, I still thought that, you know, uh, people died and could come back and communicate with you. That was that was my belief then. So you were doing this Ouija board with the other kids in the area or I was. Yes. Yeah. And um, a couple of them lost interest and and one by one, they just kind of fell away from it, you know, and um, I got to the point where I could just cut up some paper and use a drinking glass and just make it, you know, make it that way. And it would work. And I thought, well, you know, it was like maybe me and I think one maybe two other girls. And I didn't know if, you know, I thought maybe they were still kind of pushing it, but, um, they weren't, you know, it got to the point where it it would work when I was by myself and that freaked me. Yeah. That freaked me out. It did that one time and I was like, no way. Yeah. And you know, what do you mean? No way where you were, you were expecting it to work, weren't you? Yeah. But at the same time, it, Still Freaks. just a little part of you that thought maybe it is the other people doing it. And then when it was yeah. nobody else. Yeah. <laughs> Not to put words in your mouth, but that's freaking me out just the thinking about it. it. It was freaky and it just scared the heck out of me, you know, because and the funny thing was, um, let me back up for a second. This whole entire time, I loved horror movies. I mean, I just loved them. I just, you know, I, I probably watched more horror movies than I ate meals. You know wow. what I mean? I just love them that much. So that's yeah. what I'm like just, you know, putting into my my mind for years and years. Yeah. And I mean, you got to keep in mind, too, this was the 80s. So I saw The Exorcist when I was probably like six years old. Oh, my gosh. That's so yeah. wrong. So wrong. I know. It was the 80s. Yeah, but you were drunk the whole time, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so true. <laughs> you remember the 80s? Nah, she was drunk the whole time. <laughs> From age 6 to 10. <laughs> so true. Okay, so you're playing with the Ouija board and it ha- so you pretty much I mean from the the despair to the horror movies to the drinking early on to the <laughs> crabs to the dangerous <laughs> neighborhood to everything i mean that that seems like a pretty i don't know i don't even know if i know the right word for it but just kind of melancholy i guess childhood yeah i mean the odds were definitely stacked against um a, a mentally balanced adult yeah did you did you ever what kind of stuff were you getting from the ouija board anything were you asking it questions did anything freak you out too much or well you know it's a progression um Mm -hmm. because i I got to where i thought it was a drowned little boy um and i don't even know if i can say the name um but it would just give me a letter um and it was always 
because okay check this out i i would stop doing the ouija board and then like maybe a year or maybe a year and a half later pick it back up again with another set of friends or another friend that i would i would meet right and it was always the same it, I mean, how can this even be possible? I mean, now, obviously, I'm a little bit more studied up on how things might work. But um, at the time, I was like, how is this even possible? How is this the same? Um, I would call it spirit. Yeah. Um, because I would say, well, who is this? And it would go to that same letter that it did like a year, year and a half ago. <clears throat> so I kind of got familiar with who or what, I mean, what it was that I was talking to. Do you want um, to tell us what letter it was? Uh, it was always Z. And I don't know if that has any significance. I have no idea. You know, um, I, I know very little, and I don't want to I don't want to start writing your story here, but I know very little about the Ouija board, but I do know that um, a common entity that is uh, communicated I mean, almost um, uh, across the board is an entity named Zozo, and oftentimes it's just Z. Yeah. And let me tell you, one time, one time, um, that with the second instance of me using the Ouija board, like, because I would go in spurts, like I said. And I was staying at this girl's Kathy's house and it was just her and I, and I asked, you got to be careful what you ask those things. If there's anyone out there that's going to hear this and doesn't know better yet, um, don't ever, ever, ever ask to see what it looks like. Mm. Um, yeah, like there was, I actually saw the physical manifestation with my eyeballs or oh my God. I, I, yeah, and it was the scariest thing <laughs> I had ever seen in my life. And I've seen some scary stuff, but this was, I mean, still to this day, it just makes my eyes tear up a little bit just from the from the fright, I guess. I don't know. So like actual, <clears throat> not mind's eye, but actual physical sight, saw it. Well, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if I, if I know the difference between my mind's eye and my eyeballs. Yeah. To me, it felt like my eyeballs, it very well could have been, you know, just my interpretation of the physical manifestation. Sure. So I'm not sure. Now, was um, this uh, just another weird looking shadow or what? No, 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 no. This thing had, I don't know if muscles is the right word. Like if you could have a shell, but have like it, you're ripped, like muscular, you know what I mean? It, mm -hmm. it was like that. And it was big and it was gray and like, but it was still, not blurry, but it wasn't all the way defined. Like when you look at a person or an object that is all the way in this reality, you know, if it's part of this world, you can see, you know, defined lines. Yeah. Yeah. This wasn't, you could kind of see, you know, the shape, um, but it was almost like it wasn't all the way in our reality. But it was, it was enough to where it, golly man the thing was big yeah no. and scary no, so were you in your room or where were you i was in kathy's room and it was the first time that she was my new friend i was 15 i remember this she was my new friend and it was the first time i had stayed the night at her house and her parents were like super duper strict so we weren't even supposed to be awake um and, and, and I screamed and she was like, you can't scream. You can't scream. You have to stop. And then for like an hour after that, she was like, don't come near me. I feel weird, you know? And I was like, what? That's crazy. So yeah. You saw I, it in the, and she didn't see it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I don't remember that. Uh, I, I don't, you know, that's a very good question. Yeah. Maybe she's just holding out on you. Yeah. Or maybe she was messing with me. I really don't know to this day. So. Uh, sorry, my cat was okay. looking very concerned at me. I thought maybe that there was about to be a hairball <laughs> explosion. <laughs> Sometimes she just gets this look in her eye that she senses danger. Um, well, that's that's crazy. So, I mean, this really escalated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's not done yet. Oh, gosh. 
Yep. It's okay. about to get real. Okay. It's about to get, are you ready? Take me there. Take me away. Okay. Now for this next round of ridiculous Ouija <laughs> board usage, um, I was 17. My friend Pat, who was like my best friend at the time, uh-huh. he was there. He saw it. He saw this. I had a rabbit. Um, this is going to get a little bit sad. Okay. A pet rabbit. <clears throat> Yeah, pet rabbit, okay. and I couldn't find it. And I had the Ouija out, the Ouija board out, because I was just always, you know, using it. And um, <laughs> and I started asking the board, uh, where, you know, where's the rabbit? Where's the rabbit? And it kept going to the letter B, B like boy. And so I thought, you oh. were kind of using this as like a a tool. You were asking oh, the spirits yeah. to find your pet rabbit. Yeah, at this okay. time I was. And before that, it was almost like a friend, you know? Mm. Like, um, I, I couldn't, um, I guess I was just too weird for people. No wonder. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, the the Ouija board always wanted to talk to me. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yay, low self-esteem. Woo. <laughs> okay, so you <laughs> asked where your rabbit was. Yeah, so I asked, and it went to B, like um, the letter B for boy. And, um. And I was like, oh, the backyard, it must get out the back door, and the rabbit's gone now. But um, I had had a, a bath, I had a bedroom downstairs with a bathroom, and the bathroom had like n- linoleum tile. And but there, so my friend Pat and I sort of were looking around, and then we came back to the room, and there's these bloody rabbit footprints that just start in the middle oh, of the floor. Oh, no. Yeah, and then so we asked it again, the Ouija board, and we were like, where's the rabbit? And it kept, and went to B. It just kept going to B. And I was like, what in the world? And I was like, basement. Well, we were already in the basement, but I went into, like, the laundry room area. Dude, I found my little rabbit. Like, this doesn't even make any sense. <clears throat> it's, it just really doesn't make any sense. Uh-huh. It was, like, upside down, but, like, diagonal in between two pipes, and it, he was expired. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Bunny. and yeah, so Pat, you know, my mom's just like, you know, wow, just, yeah, well, we didn't know. Um, <clears throat> we did, we, you know, of course, I had no idea at the time, you know, what in the world I was, you know, really like messing with, right? Right, yeah, so after that, I, I never used it again. Yeah, that was, I, that was it for the Ouija board. I mean, how many times, if you had to put a number on it, how many times do you think you did the Ouija board? Um, gosh, like a hundred fifty over fifty. Over um, 50? Yeah, I mean that's yeah, a lot still. <laughs> mm-hmm, over fifty. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. and that's from when I can kind of remember. Right. So, but I would think it would be more than that. I don't know though. Why did? Why was that like the last straw? I mean, you, you had been doing the Ouija board a bunch of times. You had weird stuff happening. You saw a thing, and the same uh, entity was contacting you. And then, I mean, obviously, finding your poor rabbit must have been a, a pretty traumatizing. Is that what finally did it for you? Yeah, I was like, you know, I don't know if there's any specific connection, but you know. <sighs> This is, I have dogs and, and people and, you know, I don't know what this is, but it's, if I can't, if I can't understand exactly what happened, you know, I don't, I think it just scared me yeah. to the point where, you know, it finally got through. You thought maybe it was going to be dangerous, cause some danger to people. I would, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because remember this whole time I'm still watching horror movies. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. now we're getting into the genre where the paranormal genre sort of exploded because we're in like the 90s by this point. Right, right. Wow, very interesting. So, I mean, again, this this sort of macabre childhood continues and you're kind of willfully participating in the Ouija board. And was there anything else? Were you doing any other uh, sort of occultish things or – was it really just the Ouija board and the horror stories? Well, you know, and it's funny, too, because, I mean, I read, like, the Necronomicon and Study Hall, you know, here and there. but In Study um, Hall. Yeah, I, yeah, okay. So you were the, the, that kid. <laughs> but, see, but that was just, like, once or twice because it really just bored me to tears. Sure. And, you know, the funny – you're going to laugh when – you're going to so laugh. Um, 
but the funny thing was, if if you were to ask me if Jesus was my Lord and Savior, I would have told you absolutely. <laughs> I had never had a question in my mind that Jesus was God. You know, God came down, yeah. you know, fully God, fully man, died for my sins, died for all of our sins, and yeah. he's, you know, the way to heaven. So I never, but see, I acknowledged it in my head. It just never made it to my heart. Yeah, well, and you know what's interesting, and this is nothing new. We've seen this for since the beginning of Christianity, which is, you know, the, the Jesus, the Jesus story and what God's actions on earth and with Jesus. And even before that, you know, it's, we can believe that as much as we want, but there really still is sort of this desire for, uh, you know, uh, maybe either power or communication or something with, the other side, you know, that, Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, it seems to be just kind of a natural human instinct to want to reach out and sort of, uh, even if you, you you could be the best little Catholic school girl in the schoolyard, but, uh, you know, there's still that desire. I think that's, uh, maybe something left over from, from, uh, the garden or something, or even just an instinct to participate in the the spiritual realm. Yeah, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. And I think, too, it's a way um, for there to be like a crossroads. Like, yes, the spirit realm. But um, and of course, yeah, we do have a natural inclination, I think, towards that. But it's also an opportunity for us to either do we want to learn more about like demons or do we want to learn more about like God's word? Yeah, you kind so of have to I pick a side that- a little bit. Yeah. And in just, just these little subtle ways, you know, I mean, I have to, even now, um, fast forward to my life now, I still have to watch myself to make sure that while I'm learning about like, you know, maybe this certain subject and it's, you know, uncovering truth and all that stuff, I have to really like, um, um, look to God and, you know, to, to really like, uh, keep myself in check from from not uh, giving that too much attention, you know, because sometimes mm-hmm. it's almost like I feel God putting it on my heart like, OK, h- how much do you know about, you know, these demons and how much do you know my word? <laughs> mm, yeah, no, that's <laughs> like, an excellent one, point. I think that's an excellent point. And I, it, we may have talked about it a little bit on other episodes, but. Really, that is, that's a huge part of it. When you start waking up to the truth of things and you start seeing things for how they really are, you can get a little obsessed and forget about some of the, the fundamentals of our spiritual life. <laughs> exactly. Wow. So I, you stopped doing the Ouija board. Did, did all the weird stuff stop or how did that? No, I just accepted that it was just going to be a part of my life, you know, at that point. And, um, the Ouija I board was so... or the weird oh, stuff? No. <laughs> to the weird stuff. Now, uh, were you seeing stuff and experienced experiencing stuff outside of the Ouija board? Um, I I think it was just always there. Like uh, you could always, you know, just kind of like know something was there. Right, a presence, um, feel a presence or something. Y- exactly. And I spent so much of my life just consumed with like internal, like how I felt. You know, I was completely ruled by my emotions. And so my my sole drive in life was to feel better. And um, I did whatever I could, you know, like like uh, relationships or, you know, obviously like drugs and alcohol and, and anything, you know, and then like eventually like work. Um, so anything I could do. So I was so like consumed with my, you know, inner life. Right. Um, that that's what I remember more, you know, the, all the weird stuff just kind of faded into the background as just a part of my life. So I was such a narcissist, you know, I didn't even notice whatever was going on around me. Yeah. Now during these times were you continuing to drink, did that become a, a med medication habit or? Absolutely. Well, yeah. drinking kind of fell by the wayside. Cause when I was about 10, I, you know, I, I got high, um, for the first time when I was 13, I think I was doing like cocaine. When I was 14, what? it was PCP. <clears throat> when I was 17, PCP it was PCP when you were 14, <laughs> Rini? Yeah, it was the 80s. It's... <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, that is yeah, so funny. Kidding. 
That was very and I just funny. say all this now, like it's just no big deal. But I mean, it really, you know, it, I can say this because I'm on the other side of it. Yeah. Um. But you know, yeah. And so I did, like I said, I was completely consumed with being like quote unquote happy. Right. Um. I didn't know anything about you know the joy of the Lord. Yeah. You know, I I didn't know about any. I didn't know about his peace. I didn't know about any of that stuff. Did were there any more traditional steps taken? Like, did your parents put you in therapy or anything? Or, yep, I went to uh, I went to therapy when I was about eleven. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I think that was about it. And basically, as long as I stayed quiet, um, I didn't back talk or anything. Um, then my grades were decent, you know. Yeah. Then then I was okay. Um, <clears throat> I just kept it all. I ca- I just kept it. You know, um, I I think that's an interesting thing, uh, and it may be an only child thing. It may not be, it, but when you follow the rules and you keep quiet, you can really get away with a lot. <laughs> You really can. You can really, <laughs> you can really get away with almost anything if you just keep your head down. That's right. Yes. Wow. wow. It's a warning out there yeah. to other parents. Yes. You, you, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't want to bust. I don't want to be unnecessarily busting any kids or getting in, getting them in trouble. But uh, yeah, if your kid's keeping his head down. You, that's you got. You, you got to watch out for the quiet ones. I'm telling you what. <laughs> that's what they say. <laughs> Wow. That, so so this really was kind of your your life mission was just to feel better. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. And still function as a normal person in society. Right. <laughs> you know, which is not and you know, of course you you can't you can't do drugs and alcohol and and be such a narcissist and function as a normal person in society, but well, there certainly you know, is it, a limit. To to yeah. that, you know, I, I think a lot of people try real hard and they'll make it a certain, make it to a certain point, but eventually it, it stops working. That's exactly right. Yep. Yeah. And that, that's what happened eventually, you know, and man, I could just like delve into like every little sentence you're talking about, but let's, let's keep, let's keep this train rolling. <laughs> something tells me that it's, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, don't answer like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. You don't even know. <laughs> okay. All right. Lay it on me. Well, you know, and it's it, it, the progression, um, just like the, the Ouija board experiences and the usage, the, the progression of, of um, intensity and the level of destruction um, just grew. And the older I got... Um, the more uh, devastation I wrought, you know, in my life and in people's lives around me, my parents and, and, uh, oh gosh, and not on purpose, you know, I didn't set out to be this just, you know, vortex of destruction, but (laughs) just when, when you're so, you know, when your head is not basically, you know, if, if I just would have listened to God and just, you know, really just gave my heart to Jesus a long time ago. None of this would have happened, at least in my life, you know. Yeah. But um, my God was, you know, the last thing I was I was about to listen to. I was just handling it on my own. You know, I'll just fix myself. I'll be fine. I just got to get through, you know, this next class. Or I just got to, you know, finish my degree or, or whatever it was. Um, I just got to leave this one guy or, you know, yeah. make this life change. So I was making, like, all these life changes. Um <clears throat> you know, just every so often. And uh, so you were like taking initiative to try to. I, that's one thing I can give you throughout all of this, throughout <laughs> all the the dissonance and the melancholy and the everything. At least you were motivated and you were tr- oh, taking yeah. actions uh, to try to make things better. I, I, I want to recognize you and affirm you. <laughs> In as much as I can, and that's that's it's what you get so right now. I appreciate that. You're Thank so welcome. You. It's better than wallowing, you know. We get stuck in wallowing, but that's right, man. Life's too short. Yeah, I'll try something. So, um, you know, and 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 it too. I've I've always sort of had this like event, you know, sense of adventure. It's my zest for life, you know. Mm-hmm. It would just take me in like completely wrong directions, <clears throat> and so, um. <clears throat> 
<coughs> sorry, I'm so sorry for my cough. That's okay. So I, I met, um, oh, I got together with my daughter's uh, father. Um, and we had actually known each other since high school. And by this time, I'm, you know, uh, 30, about 30. And uh, so I had my I had my daughter and then he and I got married. And uh, well, that didn't work out, you know. So just basically just, you know, still trying to uh, do whatever I can to be happy. Right. Uh, moved uh, to Virginia. Uh -huh. um, that moved to Tennessee during that time. Uh, met up with my second husband. And it's funny because each um, relationship was like more destructive than the than the last. In what way? And uh, just maybe my level of woundedness. Uh, you know, because I'm older, um, and, and I've never, you know, at this point, like taken time to heal or figured out how to heal, uh, their level because of the same thing. But, uh, the very last relationship, and this is, uh, s several years ago, mm -hmm. uh, was with a literal homicidal maniac. And I <sighs> didn't know, yeah, I didn't know that people, he was like a chief of police and I'm not saying that, you know, oh, cops are evil. I'm not right, saying that at sure. all. This, this particular one just happened to be a <laughs> homicidal maniac. Yeah, totally. Okay. Well, I didn't know that at least part of his training, because he was one of the people that when when they haul you into the station for to, you know, because they think that you've committed some heinous crime and they want to get the confession out of you, they send in a an interrogator or whatever. Yeah. So they sent him in. Well, apparently part of his training was to, I guess, get into people's minds or something. I'm not sure. Whoa, this um, is like a... He's just completely diabolical. I'm not even sure if that's true. Um, that's just what he told me. But he was like a master at getting into, like, like relating to people. Like he a manipulator. He could just relate to anybody. Exactly. Well, I didn't even know people like this existed, um, much less did this stuff on purpose. It it really taught me a, a lesson <laughs> about just, you know, people are just, they just do that on purpose sometimes. Some people are just like that. Um, so what's an example? How would this manifest in your relationship? Well, it, you know, and it's so classic looking back. It's just so stereotypical. It's, it's almost embarrassing. Um, he separated me from... Um, you know, my family by sort of pitting us against each other. He would tell me things to make me feel good about whatever it was I was doing that he wanted me to do. Uh -huh. um, and then he would, he would explain why my family disagreed with that in a way that, and that would show them in a bad light. So he would basically just talk smack about them and, and have all these good explanations for why um, they were just uh, jealous or, or close minded or they were judgmental. How dare they judge you? How dare they? Wow. You're a good person, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that kind of thing. And it was all just completely not true. You know, he would build me up because and the thing is, I was in a I was in a particular state of mind. I was just easy pickings for him. Right. Um, right. You know, because I just, you know, I wanted affirmation as a person yeah. and he could just spot it, you know. And so he would, you know, separation from a support system or any contact with friends or family. That's kind of a big part of it. Uh, exactly. Of, of what these, you know, it's a, it's a big part of manipulation. It happens in cults all the time. It happens in, uh, you know, bad relationships like this. So what was his end game? He, he was just. You know, I still don't know. Um, I don't know. There's, um, they were never able, and I wasn't, I wasn't a part of this part of his life, but apparently before I met him, um, they were trying to bring charges against him, Ooh. um, for some stuff, but they could never, uh, do it because I mean, he knew the law inside and out, um, like what I don't you don't obviously well, you don't got to say anything that you're not comfortable saying but what kind of stuff Well apparently there was um 
a, a relative of his and somebody was going to testify against him. And then their place, like, you know, before that could happen, their place like burnt down with him inside of it. And oh, no. Yeah. And later on, he would always he would always say things like the weirdest things like, um, oh, you know, he would equate killing people to. um you know, you do it once and break the ice and it gets easier after that. What? No, no. Yeah. Yeah. And I was so, I know I was so warped. I was like, well, that's a weird thing to say. What conversation would you be having that that comes up? Exactly. And then, you know, I can't even, yeah, it's, it was just a horrible nightmare. And, and also too, he would be talking to I don't know who or what, like I, sometimes I kind of think that there was some like oppression, maybe possession. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, I, I would literally like, I'd be like looking in his ears, you know, like when he wasn't looking, I'd be looking for the earpiece that I knew he had tucked in there because he would just be having these conversations and nobody was there. Oh, so and he would like, be like talking to himself. Yes. But Yeah. I don't know if he was talking to himself or the voices in his head or the thing whisper in his ear or if he really was just trying to freak me out. I have no idea. But this would go on and on and on. And yeah, it was. How long did this relationship last? Uh, Golly. I left him and then I went back. Oh, no. Um, you just said, I don't lasted. have enough crazy in my life. I need to. <laughs> right. I need things to be a little bit more bizarre. Yes. Um, this lasted probably a good like three years, maybe. That is so It's all just so much of a blur. Now, it, now uh, no, you say you're one. The uh the 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 thing that um it just it still, you know, breaks my heart, of course, is he separated I let him separate me from my daughter because my daughter was like four years old at this point. I had already had her and I was I couldn't be I was just a, a terrible excuse for a mother, you know? I mean, I was so consumed, again, narcissism. I was so consumed with myself that, you know, I just really didn't have time for her. Um, so she got pushed to the side. And I tell you what, the stuff that I was involved in at that time, if it wasn't for, I mean, it's it's by the grace of God, if it wasn't for the support system of my parents and her dad, and her dad's, um, I don't think they're married, uh, yet, but anyway, like, you know, her stepmom or, or whatever, um, she, you know, she would have been, I don't know. I don't know. Wait. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. We got to take a couple steps back. You said the stuff you were involved in. Yeah. Um, I was involved in some, um, things that I should, I mean, I think like, you know, just, just of the nefarious, like just, he just had me, well, no, I can't really. Oh, I don't want to get you in, in trouble. Yeah. It just, you know, a continuation of my habits, uh -huh. you know, they just never stopped. Interesting. Okay. So yeah. just, just maybe having a little bit too much fun trying to, trying to, Feel better slash yeah. uh, contact the dead. Yeah. Well, yeah, n not so much the Ouija stuff, just like the, you know, just the inebriation. I was just too consumed with my quest for inebriation to mm -hmm. be any kind of a mother. Right. Okay. And so, yeah, not not my proudest moment in life. Yeah. No, I mean, hey, we, we, we all got our own, we all got our own trip here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So remind me, say it again. I'm, uh, how what happened to your daughter? She got separated from you, huh? Um, actually, I was um, I moved uh, to a different county. Um, there's a whole background story that, gosh, we it would take me like two hours to explain it. So <laughs> just cut to the chase. But yeah. um, I moved to a different county, and I moved in with him, and. In my head, the three of us were all going to, you know, live together. And because her dad lives right next door to me. And so I just figured we were all just like live at, right up the street from each other. Me and my crazy, you know, homicidal 
whatever her husband at the time. Right. Um, and my daughter. So, you know, because I still hadn't woken up to exactly what he was yet. But um, so I actually lost. Um, I was on at one point I was I had supervised uh, visitation. So and okay. then it got to where she could stay with me and and, uh, you know, unsupervised. So then I was in her life like every other weekend. And, you know, I was just a mess. Yeah, it was a mess. Yeah, no, it sounds like it. Sounds like it. Sounds like you had a a lot of hard stuff going on. How old were you at this time? Uh, yeah, like thirty. <laughs> I was in my thirties. Yeah. I was probably like thirty six, thirty seven. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, so I mean, still fairly young. You, you still had some time to figure it out. Now, how did things start uh, turning around? I mean, I'm sure there's. Uh, I'm sure we could go on. For, for hours again about the details of how you got away from him and the, how all that culminated. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you ever reconnected with your daughter. Well, I guess at the beginning you did say, so I'm, I'm happy to assume that you're back with your daughter and things have worked out a little bit better. Well, I tell you what, um, it's by the grace of God that my dad was like, Renee, come stay with us, you know, you know, you've got to, your daughter needs you. And my daughter was like, mom, you've got to break up with him. You know, yeah. that, that little girl was just, you know, she, she really just helps, you know, the Lord really worked through her to save, save my life. Um, so that's where we are now. Uh, I, ha you know, she stays with me and, uh, most nights, like, like I said, her dad lives right next door. And so <laughs> I have like? her all the time. Oh, it's great. She can just run back and forth. She loves it. Okay. So you guys are friendly then, huh? Well, I mean, he's not really speaking to me um, because, you know, I, like I said, I, I probably wasn't a very, you know, I, I probably wasn't a very easy uh, ex-wife to have. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't fault him for that. Sure. But when it comes to her, you know, she loves him. That's, you know, she loves him and she loves me. Yeah. By the grace of God, she loves me. You know what I mean? Um, so that's that's where it is. We just live next door to each other. And it's, it really does take a village and to you, raise a child. Yeah, you do what you got to do. And you, you got to do what's best for your uh, little daughter. What's Do you mind uh, saying her name on the air? Adele. Adele. Very yeah. cute. How old is she now? She just turned 12. 12. And she's, yeah. to your knowledge, not doing PCP regularly? She, uh, yeah, she does not want to end up like me. So <laughs> she is not going to do drugs. Right. So she's well, got a really good head on her shoulders. That's really great to hear. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> Um, so how did things start turning around like with the Lord and, and, uh, getting back on your feet, uh, emotionally and, and, uh, mentally and things like that. And I went, Oh, sorry. No. Yeah. That, there you go. That was the end. <laughs> um, you know, I just periodically, I would just try different churches and, um, Oh, I know what it was. I was, uh, I was on the way to, I was going to volunteer for a church thing. I forget what it was. Mm -hmm. Um, like a counseling thing, which uh -huh. is just hilarious in itself. Um, <laughs> so, and I was, you know, and I, I always thought that I had given my heart to Jesus. You know, I thought I was saved, but I was driving there and I had Google maps and I just, you know, it was telling me to take these turns. And I was like, I'm not doing that. You're wrong. And I just kept arguing with it and arguing with Google Maps. And I just kept taking wrong turns. And I just ended up frustrated. And I was like, you know what? That's it. I'm not arguing with Google Maps ever again. And the Lord, I'm not kidding you. The Lord, like, you know, if the Holy Spirit could kick me in my shin, because that's what he does when he really wants me to pay attention and listen up. Because <laughs> sure. I'm kind of slow. Um, the Lord was just like, see, thank you. Thank you, Renee. You know, like, um, I said that all wrong. So basically, I decided I need to stop arguing with Google Maps. And I, I've realized, you know, ding, the light bulb went off. Oh, that's why my life is this way. Because, you know, I keep like taking all these wrong turns and just not listening to God. Right. And I was like, that's it, Lord. I'm doing life your way from now on, <laughs> you know. And I'm not kidding you. Ever since then, 
every day of my life is like a miracle. Every day. He healed me of like the addiction. He healed me of just the, the brokenness. He healed me of, of every single, you know, um, like thing that drove me to these, you know, just destructive behaviors. Right. Um, just, you know, and as time goes on, it's like the more, um, I don't know if I can get healed anymore, but yeah, it's it's just amazing. And actually my daughter, you know, and I was thanking the Lord one day and I was like, Lord, thank you so much. If it wasn't for you and the safety net that you provided for, for Adele, Lord, she could have ended up in the system. And I was like, what can I do to thank you for this? And that's where the, that's where the idea for the blankets came from. That's awesome. And I definitely want to talk about the blankets, but I do want to talk a little bit about before that. Um, I mean, I, as simple as that story is, it's so profound. The, you know, just stop taking wrong turns. Just stop, <laughs> just stop, uh, you know, not listening to the GPS because kind of like you've mentioned in this interview and, you know, as we all grow, we learn this more and more about life that you know, our lives are a culmination of all the little choices that we're making. And, you know, it doesn't matter how screwed up our life is or how good it is. It can completely turn around simply by just making the small choices every day. You know, it's just those little almost kind of, you know, <laughs> in your ambition to feel better when you were younger, you know, you just make little choices here and there uh, to try to rectify your problem. Now, unfortunately it took you a little long to learn this lesson, but <laughs> you know, it's, it's fairly laid out for us that if we just apply, you know, uh, what God tells us and reveals to us uh, to even just the simplest of choices that we can make, that's when things start turning around. I mean, I've definitely seen that in my life in things as, you know, and uh, Anybody who's ever done a weight loss program, you know, or gone on a diet or tried to change their life in one way or another, it really is just little, little tiny obediences at a time. It's the, the culmination of small obediences that'll get us uh, pretty far in whatever we're trying to do, huh? I couldn't have said it better. That is a, that is a fantastic summation. And it's so true. It is so true. And that's funny because I tell you what, I've quit a lot of things and the hardest thing to ever for me to quit is sugar. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and it's, but it's like, like you said, you know, just obedience, it's obedience, our temple or, you know, I, I, you know, believe what the Bible said, yeah. you know, our, our body is a temple for the Holy spirit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you know, I that's... saw this, I saw this the other day when I was browsing Instagram and it's kind of silly. It's a, it was a, on a, some fitness thing account or something but it said one donut never made anyone fat and one salad never made anyone thin it's and and applying that to you know you could apply it to anything but we'll stay with the metaphor you know you can eat if you're in a habit of eating salads and you eat a donut you don't need to freak out like you're gonna be okay yeah. one donut isn't gonna totally crash your plane and vice versa, you know, we a lot of times, even subconsciously, we might think this where we're like, oh, my life needs to be better. My life needs to be better. I just need to make one great decision and everything will be better. I need to eat that one salad and then I will drop the 10 <laughs> pounds, you know. But the fact of the matter is, it's just a consistency. It, it doesn't even have to be every single meal needs to be a salad. And sometimes a donut will slip in there. But uh, the more good choices you can make, you know, it reminds me of what, you know, you tell your kids when uh, they're going out for the night unsupervised. Just make good choices, <laughs> make good choices. And my parents always said that. And I'm looking back now and it's not necessarily, you know, make a good choice tonight because that's it. It's, you know, continue to make good choices as you go and everything's going to be okay. I hope I can remember that when Adele is older, you know, and going off to college and yeah. 
make good choices. I can tell her that when she's going to school in the morning because I'm blessed to be able to take her to school in the morning before work. Yeah, there you go. And it's so true. Yeah, and you know, so I, anyways, I s thought that that little Instagram metaphor it came to mind when uh, during our conversation here. And so that well, that's just great. It sounds like uh, you started eating a little bit more salad and a little less PCP. I <laughs> did. <laughs> <laughs> Choose salad. And now not PCP. I don't even like. I don't even want PCP. And like every day of my life is a miracle. That is like amazing. literally. That's awesome. I'm so happy to hear that. And mm -hmm. now, are there any details, sort of, of that journey you'd like to talk about a little bit about the transformation and and the uh, you know the better choices and things like that? Well, you know, I um, I started going to a church. And uh, the pastor started talking about spending time with the Lord every day. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what in the world is he talking about? And reading my Bible. You mean I'm really, really supposed to do that? Okay. Yeah. And, you know, just being obedient and seeking after God. And all of these were like brand new concepts. And I was like, what in the world is he talking about? How do I even seek after God? And um, there was a Bible reading plan and it took, a, you know, 15 minutes a day. You take 15 minutes of your morning <laughs> and re read, read your Bible and, you know, spend time with the Lord and, you know, pray. And, um, and I, oh, the first time, first several, several times, um, I was like 15 minutes, you know, <laughs> what am I going to talk to God about for 15 minutes, Right. 15 minutes, you know? And, uh, I tell you what, <laughs> that 15 minutes, God took that um, and a, a consist on a consistent basis, you know, because I, I made it part of my getting ready in the morning. It was part of my, and it still is. Um, and it's, it's life transforming, you know, obviously 15 minutes isn't just enough, you know, now because I can get, just take that up thanking the Lord, you know, a yeah. lot, a lot of times, but anyway, I'm sorry. Um, so, it's it's amazing what God can do with just a little tiny bit of time and throughout your week in ways that you don't expect and at times that you're not looking for it. These like amazing blessings come, you know, like um, you're at a job that uh, you don't want to be at, you know, but you're there and you're learning how to be grateful even while you're in a place where you don't necessarily, you wouldn't have chose for yourself and it's mm. hard. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just like, you know, and then you start seeing um, everything as, as like a training ground for how to get to know God and how to um, look, you know, just even like looking for the blessings and learning how to be thankful um, in the mundane or through obstacles. Um, I mean, that's a blessing. So I yeah. just started like learning about all this stuff and and it was because I was spending time, dedicated time, um, learning God's word and um, spending time, you know, with, with him, uh, the Lord, you know. And yeah. um, it, it's just amazing. Like, you just get to know him and you get to know Jesus. And, you know, and it's like the more I get to know about the character of Jesus, I'm like, how can people not want to, you know, how, how can people reject him? He was amazing. He's amazing. Right. You know, and just all these different, like, I guess, intangible, like blessings. And you know what so I, that's, you know process. what I see? And it goes, so it sounded like you started eating salad is what it sounds like, but <laughs> that's a great, uh, that's a great point because what you said a little bit earlier in your, in your, uh, stanzas there about, just seeing the world differently. You know, when you start to give, uh, you know, your spiritual life and God and, and all those, you know, everything that comes along with uh, that guy, when you start giving it the right attention, even if it is just such a small amount of time during the day, um, it really does put you in a mindset. It's almost like it puts you in a spiritual mindset for uh, at least a little bit of time and day by day that time starts to get longer and longer and it just makes you more aware uh, and mindful of God throughout the entire day 
where he suddenly, you know, goes from the, you know, the, the omniscient, omnipotent being that you learn about on Sunday to you start seeing, you know, just the world and watching it work and seeing how God fits into all of it. And so every little moment of the day, your your mind is focused on, you know, the fact that there is a God of the universe who is working something out right in front of your eyes. And you may not know what it is, but just the very mindset of knowing that it's happening and being aware of it uh, for longer periods of time and more frequent periods of time during the day, I mean, it just makes such a huge difference in your life and how you see uh, the things that happen to you, the things that happen around you, and the choices that you're presented with. And I think that, I mean, that's really one of the most valuable, um, I don't know, practices maybe, spiritual practices, is just seeing and knowing that at every point during the day, God is there and doing something. You know, there's not a, the the day becomes much more exciting, I suppose. Yep. Yeah. And that, my friend, is a truth. There you go. We did it. When we started the show and I said, I, you know, the, the God put the love of truth in my heart. That's that's a huge, huge that came before all of the all of the external stuff. Yeah. So I couldn't have said it better myself. Well, You're absolutely right. That's awesome. I love I love your uh, your approval. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to be like that. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that in a in a teasing way. Um, all right. Well, t- my goodness, this has just been such a great conversation so far, and we've still got some time. We're at about an hour and twenty minutes here, and I am curious when in the world during this whole story that you've told, when did you start waking up to the 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 shadier things going on in the world. Uh, obviously, you had a great sense of, um, you know, spirituality and the, just the spiritual realm. Um, but what about uh, some of the other funky stuff? Um, honestly, my my friend, who is the one person who, you know, if well, is really excited that um, I'm talking to you tonight because he's the one person in my life that actually knows who you are. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He he called and he was like, um, he was like, hey man, have you ever checked out this podcast? And I was like, what's a podcast? And this, mind you, this was like maybe a year ago. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you got to check out this podcast called Canary Cry Radio. Awesome. And I was like, what's a podcast? So I figured out, you know, how to find you, you know, cause thank goodness you guys have a website. <laughs> um, and I was like, pizza, what? <sighs> oh boy. All right. Oh, I like food. You know? <laughs> oh, no. I'm not kidding. And I'm from that area. I should know. Um, but I sh- you know, and I, I turned it on. I was like, what in the world are these people talking about? And you know, it, it, it caught my attention because you guys, um, you're talking about some really heavy topics and you give it the weight it deserves. You really do. Um, but at the same time, you guys aren't taking people on an emotional roller coaster to Mm -hmm. make in, in, um, to try to get them to feel a certain way. I don't know if that makes any sense. No, actually that's a wonderful compliment. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I was like, Wow. You know, because I've spent years like not watching the news because I was like, man, they're just all these people are getting hyped up for this and then hyped up for that. And everybody is like splitting to this side and that side. And yes, there's horrible things going on. And yes, it does evoke emotion in us. But the ones presenting us with this, you know, so-called facts, what's you know, there's there's some bias in there. And I could never it was just so convoluted. I just, you know, I was like, forget it. Yeah. But then I stumbled, you know, my friend told me about Canary Cry and I started listening and I was like, there's people out there telling the truth and not trying to manipulate stuff. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Imagine that. I was like, I couldn't, I was like, does anybody else know about this? (laughs) (laughs) Apparently people have known for a little while. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you'd be surprised. Well, that's very, that's very interesting. I got to say. That that's uh so it's kind of a recent event for you then. 
Really? It really is. Wow. Yeah, the external truths of stuff, you know, is yeah. definitely uh, mm -hmm, absolutely recent. Well, that's v actually, I'm very happy to hear that. You know, most people uh, that I talk to, of which I love all of them, um, you know, a lot of them have been, you know, I, I woke up to this stuff when I was 13 and that was 84,000 years ago. Um, I do. Or, you know, even even the younger people, you know, they grew up and their dad was, you know, into this stuff or something. Um, but it sounds like you've had a, a pretty recent and fairly organic exposure um, to this sort of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. OK, well, get ready, because I am so curious. <laughs> OK. Um. So uh, I guess my first question would be, so what was kind of the. Why did he think that you were a safe person to turn on to this weird stuff? Um, we went to high school together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's funny because he was always um, an atheist to the point of making fun of Christianity. Sure. And, uh, you know, he, m my belief system, even though, you know, I, I was a believer technically in my head, even though I didn't live like a believer. Uh -huh. um, so my foundational, you know, belief system was based on Christianity. And so I think it was because it was from a biblical perspective mm -hmm. that he thought that, you know, be, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to put a main point in. Um, uh, we didn't talk for several years and then we, you know, reconnected and stuff. And um, he gave me a Bible one year for Christmas. And I was like, what are you doing? You know, and he was like, I'm in church, you know, with my family. And I'm like, what are you doing there? And I was like, are you serious? You know, so he's no longer an atheist. Yay. You know, praise God. That's just amazing. Wow. You know, to, Yeah. I just couldn't believe it. I was wow, like, I was still on the floor. Awesome. Yeah. And so he's like recommending your show. It's, you know, through a biblical, you know, so I think that that is probably why. Um, and I'm not one to just make fun of, you know, anybody, no matter what their views are, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, generally speaking. So I think that it would be, even if I wasn't into whatever, I, I wouldn't come back and be like, that's stupid, you know? Right. So right. Just, he just knew me. Wow. Well, that's and, awesome. Uh, that's awesome that you were, even though you didn't express any kind of interest in, you know, whatever the Illuminati or the one world government or anything like that. Um, that he considered you a safe person to turn on to that kind of stuff because, you know, a, that's kind of a dangerous thing. I mean, that is – we our listeners are very wonderful and they're very good at sharing the show and turning people on and, and waking people up. But it's kind of a – you know, it's a dangerous thing to sort of open up in that way because people think you're crazy or, you know, alt-right or whatever it is that they think is Yeah, I just went through that. Thing. I tried to – Oh, I'm sorry. I, don't... No, <laughs> I no. get so excited. No, tell me. <laughs> um, yeah, I just went through that. You know, I was like, oh, the people I, I love, you know, it, my church, my former church, they need to know about this stuff because they obviously don't know about it. And there were some things going on in that church where I was like, they need to know because obviously they don't know that what they're doing, I, you know, they need to like look into this. Um, they, it's like you either embrace the truth and thank God for it and ask him to help you handle it and what you should do with it. Um, or you completely shun it and everybody connected with it. So I agree. It is a very, you know, it is, it, you're taking a, a huge risk sometimes when, when you, um, share. Yeah. Or no, yeah. really for sure. And so again, proud of you for being a safe person to share the show with. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. okay. So very interesting. So, uh, so you weren't, he knew you weren't going to make fun of him and he shared the show and, and you started with Pizzagate, which holy moly, that's quite a place to start. Um, I was like, what? <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, that, that probably would have turned me off if I was in the same situation. But, um, I'm curious, did the, do you think that the whole election and everything going on maybe, uh, helped foster that acceptance a little bit or because we did notice during the election that there was a little bit of a of an influx in just people starting to be outspoken about things like the nwo or pizzagate specifically or something like that 
Did that maybe have any influence in uh, in your waking up? Um, I don't, you know, kind of the way I see that office, it, I I don't think that um, one particular person in that office is going to do is going to thwart the will of God, you right. know? Yeah. Um, so I don't know, you know, I didn't even look at it from that perspective, but you might have a point. Well, what I yeah. saw with that episode, I thought, Oh my goodness, this is going on. And these people are talking about it. And mm. I was just so grateful. I was like, thank you, God. Yeah. I didn't know about this, you know, and thank you for these people who are putting this show on and having these people for, you know, you and God's. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Oh, um, but I didn't, I didn't, um, honestly, I don't follow politics cause it's all just a bunch of, um, it's just to me, it's so like overwhelmingly confusing right. and because it's, I'm always trying to figure out like, what are they really like, what's their end game? And, you know, when I, when I look at one candidate, I see the, those crazy NAR people. And when I look at another candidate, I see, you know, um, you know, human sacrifice. I don't know. That's just right, kind of, and I'm right. not saying that that's what it is, but that's what I see. No, but sure. So, yeah. So. I mean, that's, I think that you're, you've joined a club, which, which are the same people you're in a safe, this is a safe space for you. That's so nice. Yeah. I want you to feel safe and, ex and accepted here. Um, that's amazing. <laughs> It's funny because I've been trying to tell people about those crazy NAR people before I knew, like a couple of years ago. Yeah. And they would just like pat me on the head, you know? Yeah. Okay. Well, for... I'm like, no, no. I'm oh, sorry. No, no. For those listeners um, who maybe haven't heard about it, why don't you explain it? Well, um, it's been a while since I put my research away, yeah, <laughs> but, okay. um, you know, I was, I was going back to college. I had it, I had it all set. I was going to finish my degree and I started, Lord, what college should I go to? And it's funny because, um, I stumbled upon this college that was just perfect. It was affordable. It had the degrees that sounded great. Um, and I checked the accreditation and it was, it had one in the accreditation, whatever organization, was created it looked like for that one college and it was c peter wagner and i was like who's this person um and he is i don't know the leader or founder or something of the new apostolic reformation mm -hmm. <clears throat> and i started reading some of their doctrine and it lines <laughs> parts of it run parallel to the bible except for just a little thing of um from what i read they want to take they want to prepare the earth so that Jesus can come back. It's like they want to take Jesus out of the final fight, A. Eh? Um, and I'm, I didn't even know about the International House of Prayer or anything like that yet. This is just straight doctrine that I was reading. And I was, you know, and I was like, wow, it sounds a lot like the Bible, except for the fact that we don't need Jesus to rid the earth of evil. Um, they, that is what their doctrine is. And they have a, I think the word was utilitarian. Like, basically, they want to take over um, by infiltration of all aspects of society and pretty much, like, just make everybody be, quote, unquote, Christian. Mm, and I yeah. was like, wow, this is like a sneaky, like, the Crusades, but, like, yeah. in a sneaky way, you know? So mm -hmm. that's that was my take on it. Yeah. You know, I, I've been saying it for years, and it's not saying I'm the one who invented it, but you can't legislate people into the kingdom of heaven. You can't. You can't. It just doesn't work that way. In fact, I don't think Jesus would be very happy about it. Um, no, not at all. But, you know, that's uh, when it comes to, you know, hard politics, actual politics, not the, the theater that we are so obsessed with in this country. Um, you know, that's a that's a I, I do kind of see that as a problem. And for an, an additional reason being that. A, you know, legislating people in one way or another into the kingdom of heaven doesn't work. And in another, it just makes them angry at you and makes them – it hardens their hearts even more when they yep. when they see that you're trying to do that, which is unfortunate. God gave us free will. Who is mankind? You know what I'm saying? He wants us to follow him, like, willingly. He wants us to choose him. It's about a choice. You know, we yeah. have to choose Jesus. Absolutely. Now, how did you see the the NAR moving into uh, 
uh, your spheres there? I don't know if this is um, technically the NAR, but from what the, okay, for example, the church that I had uh, just sort of left, um, there was a whole series based on uh, the sermon series, uh, based on um, Disney movies. And um, I don't want to be all preachy. So, and so I, I, I don't see, um, I didn't see people speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw a very like watered down version of the gospel. And I started to see where they would promote the series. Oh, we're going to address these issues and we're going to address the tough issues. And they just would never say anything about it. Um, so it was almost, and then when I, approached one of the leaders and I was like, Hey, um, do you know that, um, okay, maybe you shouldn't have, they had a, a Lady Gaga song as part of the worship service. Uh, yeah, I've been hearing and, a lot of that lately. And I started looking into exactly what she chooses to follow. And I was like, why would you, you know, why would you have, you know, Lucifer's voice on God's stage, you know, or pulpit or whatever. Right. right. Uh, so, and anyway, um, so I approached the leadership and I didn't expect them to believe me, but I fully expected them to get, to take heed and say, huh, let's dig into this. You know, this chick sounds crazy, but at least we can kind of research it for ourselves. It literally took me five minutes, you know, and these people have like doctorate degrees. Um, so they know about research. So, but, you know, they, uh, they shunned it and I started noticing more and more, um, a turning away and a shunning sort of, of, like I said, the truth, um, and any, um, any person connected to the truth. So I don't know if that's the new, I don't know if that's the NAR, you know, influence, so to speak, but I don't know what you call it. Yeah. I know it's some kind of well, crazy movement that's not good. It's certainly, you know, it's uh, I, I don't know what to call that quite yet as well. But it's something that we've been seeing and, you know, it's been seen before in history. Um, but, you know, when you it's part of the dangers of waking up to these things, you know, suddenly Lady Gaga is not just a pop star who, you know, you can sing her song in church because maybe it's one of her positive ones and you can spin it to be talking about God or something. Exactly. You know? Can't you do that with the Marilyn Manson song too? <laughs> I mean, that's what I approached the leadership with and they were like, well, we wouldn't have it. We wouldn't play his songs in church. Right. Well, unfortunately, like they play for the same team. <laughs> yeah. Well, unfortunately, you know, as far as church organization goes and I understand it, just I've been around it. I understand it. Not saying it's necessarily right, but I get where they're coming from. Sometimes you just they get a little blinded by trying to get butts in the seats, you know. Yeah. And, and if there's one thing we do know about Lady Gaga, she gets butts in seats. She does, and you know what? That's what I loved about that church is um, they really take the Great Commission seriously. They don't stop at whatever. You know what I'm saying? They they go, they do literally everything they can to reach people. You know, and I respect that. I really do. Yeah. I just think that there needs to be a level of discernment that that's missing. Yeah, no, certainly. And, you know, there's a lot to be said about, you know, I don't know. Some people would say that if you have Lady Gaga playing in your church, then you are now a synagogue of Satan or something. Um, and I don't necessarily think that's the case. But at the same time, you know, you can there's some good music out there that doesn't really involve human sacrifice and, uh, you know, <laughs> exactly of whatever i'm right there with you yeah yep. so yeah so that's been hard during this kind of waking up period for you which i think is is a huge part of it uh you know some some people who have been into this stuff for a long time they're able to you know call it out before before it gets too intense but this is relatively recent uh for you which is awesome are you um you know we talk about and we've talked about it on this show the the what I don't even remember if I had a name for it, but the the conspiracy blues, I guess. 
Or at a certain <laughs> point, it just gets to be too much and it just starts having a huge negative effect on your psyche and your family and can even go into like all parts of your life just because the truth is is really dark. Have yeah, you have and... you hit that point or are you prepared for it or tell me about that experience? I, I hit that point and you know and it was and it like I said earlier it was more of um no but I can't do anything with it because nobody around me cared. Right. And uh you know as I I mean my my mom and dad are like the most supportive, you know. Um but no one that I was, I guess, fellowshipping with or the people that I wanted to reach and, and help them. And, you know, they didn't care. Yeah. And um, so absolutely. And really, I was I was listening to probably Canary Cry Radio and you were talking about this show mm-hmm. and, it, you know, and uh, and I thought and you described it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's exactly what I'm experiencing. Mm. And so, yeah, uh, your show has helped tremendously. It, <laughs> well, I'm very, it really has. I'm very, very happy to hear that because, mm-hmm. you know, I felt called to start it. And I thought, well, that doesn't sound like something anybody's going to listen to. But to hear that, uh, <laughs> you know, it, at least if not being a solution, at least helping people feel that they, it, that it's not weird that they're experiencing that and that we're all in this together and we're all trying to figure it out. So That's right. I, I'm very glad that uh, that you had that experience as well. Um, now, speaking of which, uh, do you have any, maybe you got any advice, any life experience for maybe people who are either going through that or maybe going through something else related to that and, you know, I think your your motivation for happiness, your inborn motivation for happiness is already a great piece of advice for anybody out there. Um, and a lot of times is the hardest part. To That's the hardest part, just getting the motivation to uh, either feel happier or uh, fix something emotionally or, or bring up maybe a hard conversation with somebody or something like that. I would probably say happiness isn't, um, happiness isn't, oh, I just had it and it flew right out of my head. Oh, that's um, okay. Happiness isn't an emotion. Happiness is the result. It's, I would say it's happiness, I would say, or joy mm-hmm. is the result of, um, every day choosing to dedicate your life, your actions, and of course you, it, we don't get it right. I don't get it right nearly, you know, nearly enough. Yeah. Um, but every day I choose to follow God. I choose to follow the Holy Spirit's leading in my life. And as a result, um, I, I, I've gone way beyond happiness um, to joy. Yeah. So I think that's the ultimate goal. No matter what you are, no matter what you feel, no matter what drives you, if you just every day... Um, first of all, give your heart to Jesus and, uh, you know, every day just follow the guy, you know, get to know the Lord, um, get to know the, 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 the voice or, you know, uh, the sound or, or the feeling or, of uh, the Holy spirit, you know, and, and the leading of the Holy spirit. If you make that choice every single day, um, it, your happiness, your contentment, the contentment, the um, joy is just a natural result. Yeah, that's good. So. That's really good. Like like you said, it's that consistency. It's it's making it's eating salad. One donut that's won't right. make you fat. One salad won't make you thin. You just got to make more good choices than bad choices. I love that analogy. <laughs> I really do. Well, that's good. So let's talk a little bit about uh, blankets for Jesus. Yay! Yeah, get, why don't you give us a rundown here? Well, we just make blankets for kids, man. Um, we just make yeah. blankets for kids, man. We just make <laughs> we make blankets for kids in crisis. Um, I That's mean, awesome. you don't have to you don't have to love Jesus to want to help some kids, you know. Um, so it's ever it's not exclusive just for you know Jesus people. Um, but I have you know I don't make a lot of money. Um, so 
it's all donations from usually like one or two people right. and it doesn't take like a whole lot of money, that kind of thing, you know? So it's a very small, small, small operation. I can do what I can in my local area. Um, but basically, um, I can't, sew. I, I'm not good at measuring. Um, I can't really cut in a straight line. I'm not crafty or anything. And these blankets, these like, we just tie them together and there's, it's like so easy. Even I can do it. So what and, started this? Oh, um, I was thanking the Lord one day uh, for, you know, my daughter's safety net that he provided so that she didn't end up in, you know, the system. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what can I do? You know, and another thing, too. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I was also asking the Lord. I was like, Lord, you got to give me something to do, because if not, I'm going to find something on my own. And, you know, we both know how that ends up. So the Lord, you know, just I don't even know how um, I just came across a, a it was like on Pinterest or something, and I don't even go on Pinterest, um, like uh, instructions for making a no-sew blanket. And I was like, what's fleece? <laughs> <laughs> now I know all about fleece. I was like, a blanket? And my daughter saw me making a blanket, and she was like, who are you making this blanket for? And I was like, I, I don't know. And she was like, why <laughs> are you making know. it? The internet made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, she was like, as she asked me, she said, well, why are you making it? And I was like, I'm not sure. And so I needed, um, I was actually leading a Bible study at this point and I needed to have a community outreach project for my little group. Uh -huh. And I didn't want to go paint some benches, although that is great. People need benches painted. Um, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. And uh, I was in church one day and my pastor said something about child abuse. And it was one of those, you know, Holy Spirit moments where he kicked me in my shin. And he was like, there you are. Yeah. And I was like, OK, child abuse. You know, we're going to fight child abuse. Right. And I was like, well, how do I do that? You know, and then uh, just I started I, I actually <laughs> I actually Googled child abuse, you know, in the county that I live in. And it pulled up this children's advocacy center. And so I went up there and I talked to the lady and I brought the blanket and she was like, oh my gosh, yes, these are perfect. They would love these. So I just started making some blankets and I didn't think anybody would want to help me. I didn't think anybody would want to like care, um, but it just kind of took off. And so we make blankets once a month, we get together and um, it's, it's hosted by like just, you know, local churches um, because you need some tables and a lot of room. And uh, I just bring all the material, then the scissors, and uh, we. Uh, there's a oh yeah, we have a logo now, Ooh, and the look website. At you. You're so Hi official. There. You're making yeah. it happen. It's very exciting. What an awesome and, cause. Yeah. Yeah. So what's uh, so you said it was called blankets for Jesus. Blankets for Jesus. Blankets yeah. for Jesus. You got a website. I do. Um, it's ah. Uh, I had a website and like cyberspace eat it classic and not only did it eat it, it ate the history, like the hosting th people or whatever. Yeah. They were like, um, we don't even have a record of your website mm -hmm. like ever existing. And I was like, what? Yeah. So my website person, um, had like a skeleton backup thingamabob or something. And so I'm able to, I'm in the process of rebuilding the site. Um, so I hope to have that back up and running in the next couple of weeks, and it's blanketsforjesus.org. That is awesome. Very cool. How many blankets do you think you've you've made so far? Um, upwards, uh, we're, we're closing in around 200. I mean, on a good month, mm -hmm. I'll, we'll get like 20 made, 28 made, 30 yeah. I think is our top. So it's a super small operation. No, but that's very good. It's doing good work. Doing good work, girl. <laughs> doing the lord's work so oh, right. so do you have any uh way to take donations or anything right now um no i mean actually you know what though i went out and i got a separate bank account and it's a legal business entity because eventually i maybe not now that i'm learning more about it but um my goal was to be like a 501c3 but yeah anyway i just wanted to keep the donation money separate from my bank money and so i could have a verifiable like track record of financial you know fiduciary yeah, responsibility or whatever that's very and good and so 
there's like a whole separate bank account. But um, yeah, on the website, there is, you know, you can click PayPal and, and donate, you know, but. Um, okay, well, good. So, if, and what do you do? With, what will you do with that money? Make blankets? Yes, go buy material. Good. That's what I do. Good, good. Very nice. Well, that's awesome. And I think that, that that's a great thing to, to hear your story and to have it lead up to doing such good, I think, is just a, an awesome and amazing thing. It's very cool. Oh, did I lose you? Uh-oh. Are you there? Oh, here I am. Are you there? Oh, good. Yes, my phone might be losing battery, so Uh-oh. I just plugged it in real quick. Okay. Well, that's good. Um. Well, anyways, I was just I was just singing your praises to the listeners. You're gonna have to listen to the episode if you want to hear what I said. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you think that uh, doing the uh, I I don't want to simply call it charity. You're sim- you are doing great work and uh, helping people. Do you think that that's had an impact on your your emotional well being and your your the joy in your life? Absolutely. It's cathartic. Um, making, I mean, just from the ladies that come and make the blankets, um, they just tell me like how, what a blessing it is to them to be able to do that. I never saw that coming. Yeah. Never saw it coming. Yeah. That's awesome. So what about, uh, on your, on your date? Well, first of all, do you have any furry friends? I do. Yay. Um, there's Roxy, who's my daughter's dog, but we kind of share her. Mm-hmm. There's Clarabelle that my daughter insisted on rescuing out of the road a <laughs> couple years road. ago. Wow, that's a serious yeah, rescue she, mission. She, yeah, she's pretty awesome. My daughter's awesome. Um, and then there's Lucy, who's my mom's dog, and she like pees everywhere she knows I'm going to walk and premeditatively poops. Or she knows I'm going to be stepping. She's a really smart dog. Yeah, classic. And then all the neighborhood cats come because they know my dad's going to feed them. <laughs> and then we have two inside cats, but they take turns being inside because they always attack each other. Holy and smokes. And we, we had a hamster, but my daughter's dog ate it. Oh, well, you know, they're snack size. <laughs> but I'm sorry to hear about that. <laughs> you know, when I had a kid, when I w- had a kid, when I was a kid... <laughs> I, uh, I, I had, uh, I'm trying to think, I think in total I had maybe four adult hamsters and then there were a bunch of babies that resulted. <laughs> so I am very well versed in the world of hamsters. And also I will recommend to anybody out there, uh, do not breed hamsters. Uh, and if you do, you need to separate that daddy from the litter immediately or else your child will stumble upon their own horror movie. It's not good. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's not good. Rodents are crazy. They're crazy. But it sounds yeah. like you have a whole menagerie going on over there. I think I, I think I lost count at all the neighborhood cats. <laughs> yeah, but there's sounds, a few of them. Sounds like you're a very furry friendly family. Oh, yes, we love animals. Very good, very good. Now, you know, I've probably said salad on this episode more than any other episode <laughs> combined. So, as long I might as well ask, how's your donut to salad ratio? Oh, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit, because let me tell you, I love to eat some donuts, but he's, you know, I've been just under some conviction, you know, yeah. not condemnation, but yeah. conviction about my eating habits, and so a few months ago, I've started um, sort of learning about uh, uh, there's just truth in everything. Um, what, <laughs> what we're putting, <laughs> what we're putting in our bodies probably shouldn't be there for the most part. So yep, yep. I've really been a uh, I've been on the juicing train, you know, oh, for a yeah, while. Yeah, girl. Oh, I love some juice. <laughs> and, um, Yeah, so, and I'm trying to um, incorporate that sort of uh, better eating habits um, into my daughter's uh, life. And instead of restricting, I'm just trying to shove so many nutrients down us uh, that there's not a lot of room for donuts. There you go. That's a great way to do it. That's (laughs) 
That's a, I would almost call that genius, a genius Thank move. You. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I spend a lot of time in prayer over this, so that's fine. <laughs> well, that's good. You know, I got to say, for anybody trying to make a big change like that in your life, you know, we kind of, we not trivialize it, but we kind of talk about it jokingly and we say, oh, yeah, I got to start eating better. Oh, yeah, I got to start exercising more. No, you need Jesus. You need some supernatural power to make that last. You do. That's right. (laughs) Because donuts are delicious. But that's, it's true. It's that, it's that, uh, it's that immediate gratification. But have you noticed an an improvement in your life since uh, trying to make better choices? I tell you what, I feel so much better. And also too, like mentally, Um, when I make better choices that I know, you know, that obviously honor God, but, um, just from a physical standpoint, Mm -hmm. when I'm not like sugar highs and crashing lows, I can handle the irritations, like the, the, just the general everyday irritations a lot better. I can keep them like out there. Like my hand is fully extended, um, away from, you know, me and my mental, you know, um, it doesn't impact me yeah. n- nearly uh, it, as it would. You become a much more stable person. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. You start stabilizing your eating habits. And I have tried to communicate this, and I don't know if I do a good job or not out there. And look, I get it. I get it. You get it. We all get it. Donuts are delicious. Cheeseburgers are delicious. Mm-hmm. And you can still – you can still look, one donut never made anybody fat. But That's right. There, one salad didn't make anybody thin, but also, you know, like you said, when you start eating better, you start treating yourself better. It's like a full scale holistic improvement in your life. I mean, I got to yep. say anybody, if you're going through anything, I'll say anything. If you're having emotional problems, if you're just hating your job and not doing very good, if you have a lack of, you know, motivation or aren't sleeping well or any name, any problem. I recently, um, and she listens to this show, uh, somebody was inspired by uh, the <laughs> my evangelism of healthy habits. She was actually cured of, shoot, what is it? Anyways, her doctor took her off all of her medication for her heart, for her liver, for her diabetes, all that stuff. She started taking care of herself and... Not only does it make your your mind clear and your your emotions more stable, but I mean, it literally cured this woman of some Yay. pretty serious issues. So, there you go. There's my there's my rant, my nutritional rant for the day. And look, I'm not perfect. Look, I just went on a whole week stint. Actually, this is something yesterday, uh, which was uh, 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 Reformation Day, also known as Halloween yep. to others. <laughs> I kid you not, and I I woke up, I had pizza for breakfast. I said, it's Reformation Day, I'm going to treat myself. <laughs> I had pizza for breakfast. I went to lunch with friends. They ordered a pizza. I had pizza for lunch. <laughs> and then I had a, a take-and-bake pizza for dinner. I had pizza for every <laughs> meal on Reformation Day. Take that. Yeah. Roman Catholic Church. That's um, right. <laughs> and yeah, did I feel good about it? At the time I did, but I don't <laughs> feel good about it now. But it's all about just hopping back on that train, you know? You can you can eat all pizza for one day and and then get back on the train the next day. You just got to you just got to do it. I get it. Anyways, okay. I got a little excited there. I Me just too. I was actually looking for a reason to to tell people that I had pizza for every <laughs> single meal. I still can't believe it. It got by by the end of the night. I was like, "Oh man, I need dinner." Oh man, I don't have anything. Oh, I do have this pizza. I can't have <laughs> I can't have pizza for every meal of the day. I said, "Reformation Day, I'm gonna do it," and I did it <laughs> more for bragging rights than anything else. I think, but that's valid. Yeah. Anyways, well, this has just been so wonderful. I'm so I'm so happy that we are able to uh, schedule this and get on the line. Is there anything just burning on your heart here before we kind of wrap up? 
Well, you know, just if I could um, touch on the nutritional thing uh, real yes. quick. Yes, um, please. You know, it's not good to, to live ruled by your emotions. Obviously, mm-hmm. my life is a shining example of that. Um, <laughs> we, we can't shut our emotions off either. Um, also, it's not good to live by your taste buds. You can't, mm. you know, you can't let your taste buds right? rule you. Right. It won't work. I mean, you can, but it won't work out well. Yeah. Um, so, but you shouldn't ignore them either. No, so, but that's you, a... You, that's a great point because I've run into that. Uh, I'll do my preaching, you know, about nutrition. And, you know, some smart aleck will say like, oh, but I just love pizza. I can't. It just tastes so good. I'm like, I get it. Like, I get it. Things taste good. Yeah. Salad doesn't necessarily taste good. It's an acquired taste. <laughs> I understand it. But you can't live your life seeking that flavorful pleasure. I just can't do it. It's not good. Anyways, <laughs> I'm I'm swinging down from my from my soapbox here. <laughs> but like I said, this has just been so wonderful. I'm so happy we got to do this. Are you Are you happy? I, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. Okay. I so appreciate you having me on, and I just appreciate everything you do and everything that your listeners. Because I mean, I I get a lot of it. Um, uh, useful, you know, edifying things from the people that you have on your show. Good. So, Good. I'm a big s- thank you to every, all of you guys. I'm so glad to hear that. And I say thank you to, to all of my listeners, including you, Rini. And, <laughs> um, hey, we're, we're going to have to check back in one of these days. And uh, good good luck with your menagerie. All right. You gotta, thank you. You got to watch out because they'll revolt, they'll take over the house. That's all right. Stay yeah. on that soapbox. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, and uh, we'll keep in contact. Sounds good. Bye. Bye. Well, there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. I know I sure did. Renee is a wonderful, wonderful person. And uh, everybody, go to blanketsforjesus.org. Check out the ministry. Support the ministry if you can. And uh, let's get some let's get some more blankets to kids, y'all. Okay, good. And while you're at it, you can head over to Facebook.com. Like our Facebook page, Facebook.com slash the Joyspiracy Theory. You know how that goes. And uh, if you haven't done it yet, leave a rating and review. Look, I get it. I say this at the end of every episode. And you're tired of hearing it, and you've probably turned off the episode by now. But if you have not turned off this podcast, please go to iTunes or whatever podcast player you're using and leave a rating and a review. That's a number of stars. Those stars, imagine them like, well, stars, I guess. You know, you know how it works. Five stars is good. One star is bad. And uh, you can leave a review explaining why you gave that many stars. And I, again, I say it all the time, but it really helps the iTunes robots um, show us to other people. It makes it easier to find the podcast, and it just generally helps spread the joy. Now, I want to thank everybody who supports the Patreon. You guys are my heroes, um, and, and every listener who supports in whatever whatever way they can is fantastic. Now, you already know about the Patreon. Go over there, sign up. It's got good stuff. We actually have some big stuff on the way, and I know I've said that before, but it's, it's true. It's coming. It's coming. Um, but instead of that, maybe you, you don't want to necessarily support financially, but if everybody listening to this right now, just send this this podcast to two of your friends who you know would enjoy a wonderful conversation like this and uh we'll just spread the joy that way there you go thanks guys for that um a lot of you uh, you can go over to the joyspiracytheory.com and you'll see a little tab on the right hand there and many of you have sent me voice messages you can send me a voicemail you can do whatever you want read me a poem sing me a song uh, just say hi to somebody, all that stuff. It's all good. Go do that. And sometimes we have them at the end of the show. So that's that's always fun. You might hear yourself on the show. Speaking of which, if you want to come on the show and have a conversation with me, send me an email at thejoyspiracytheory at gmail.com. All right. And remember to tune in next time. But until then, don't trip on the grass. Just praise Jesus for... Oh, man. That's a bad word to try to rhyme things with. Okay. See you later.